All right, so for my man at NBC Live 56, we're going to do the um, BPM function, which he was asking a question about doing a follow-up on the first video. So as you can see, he's referring to right here from BPM. And this is really very simple. Um, and there's not a lot going on right here. Um, so what you're going to do is I have a sample already set up. And we're going to like play this. I'm going to play you this uh, sample right now. It's 8 beats, whatever you want to call it, and it's 80 BPMs. So when it's talk, when we're using the from BPM, we're talking about two things, two sequence which we went over on that first video, which means that the uh, 80 BPMs, if you go two sequence, it's going to reflect right up here. It's going to change that to 80 BPM, okay? If you do a match, then what's going to happen is it's going to match the BPMs that you already have set up on your, on your, um, on your project, and it's going to change this to reflect that 150, like so. Now, what you're going to notice, if you go back, you're going to notice two things. The one, this, this one second thing, I'm not sure what's going on with that. That could be easily fixed, though, by trimming it over here. But the tuning part, that's where it's going to sound way different. Because you just told um, the MPCX to match the BPMs on your project to the BPMs of this um, loop. So if you hear it back now... <laughs> it's going to be way faster. It's going to have that funny, funny sound. So let's go back and check out what's going to happen now. So we're at the from BPM, and I'm very sorry about that. The way it's, the sample is not that exaggerated. As always, every time you go to make a video, you got technical difficulties. That's why last time I didn't even want to use um, screenshots, but I'm already involved in the whole situation, so we're going to finish it. So it's at 1088. It compensated for, the take, for matching the... Um, the tempo on your project to match the 80 BPMs that were on, on the loop. So it compensated by tuning it up 1088. So how do we fix that? Let's just say that you do want that um, that drastic of a change from 80 to uh, to 150, and you like it, right? Um, so let's go and fix that now. You want, but you want to keep you want to keep the original way that the loop sounded. You don't want it this high pitched sound, okay? Uh, minus the distortion, which is something that's uh, technical, technical difficulties on my behalf over here. But anyways, so what you want to do is you want to close that, and you want to go over to pitch shift, all right? And I already, as you can see, I already have a set. So to compensate for that big jump to a positive 1088 or plus 1088, you want to go negative 1088, bring it back to zero, to where the, the, the sample was in the first place. Once you have that set, you want to put 10, negative 1088, hit enter, and then you want to hit um, do it. Okay, if you notice the waves kind of changed a bit and then when we listen to it back and again, I apologize for the way it sounds, but hopefully you get the idea. Okay, so as you can hear, it's back to where it was before. And so that's what uh, from BPM is really all it is. There's not a whole lot going on. Just to recap a little bit, um, you have your uh, bars or beats right here set up. That sample already had eight, uh, eight, eight bars, eight beats, whatever. It came out, it detected at eight, uh, 80 BPM. Um, to sequence, it's going to change uh, the 80 BPMs to reflect your project at, eight, at, this, at the uh, sequence that you want it to reflect on the loop, 80. Match means that you're going to match um, the project to the loop, which this was 80, so you, the project was set at 150, and um, so you set it right here. And um, then, of course, and then you got to fix, if you want it to go back to the way it sounded originally without that high pitch, Right, and that can go either way. It can change it like it just depends on how you change the BPMs. It, it could even reflect it negative, and you might want to go have to go back to pitch shift and do it to the positive. So um, and tune it up, tune it down, tune it up. Okay, so that's how that's all it really is. Is there's not a whole lot to it uh, from BPMs. Um, and then if you go to detect BPMs, basically it's going to detect your sample. So if you have it chopped up to four, eight, sixteen bars, whatever it is, and if you hit detect as we are going to right now. You see that it's going to reflect that 80 because it knows that this is an 80 BPM uh, tempo. So uh, the ones over here, if you hit times two, means it's going to go double. And uh, let's go back. And if you hit this one, it's going to go minus. <laughs> so it's going to take it down half the tempo or up the tempo. So that's really it, guys. There's not a whole lot going on over here. 
um, as far as what you need to learn in the from BPM, de detect BPM function is very simple. Play with it, play, uh, take some loops, put them in there, um, figure out what the, the BPMs are, I mean the bars are, excuse me, and uh, detect the BPMs for you and then you can play around and you know change your, you know, say you have it at 80, you don't want to go 150, that's just what I was playing around with just to show you how drastically you can go. You can go to 80 to let's say 90, you want it a little bit, a little bit quicker, you know, it won't be that drastic of a change like you just heard. So um, try it out. Play with it. All right. Have fun with it. Thank you guys for watching. I do apologize for the way that that distorted on you. I hope you got something out of it regardless. NPC Live 56. I hope you got something out of this. I hope it answered your question. If you guys have any more questions, please let me know. I will try to get them as soon as I can, man. Thank you so much for watching. You know what time it is. I am your host, XA, and I'm out.